Ricardo, can you tell us why you think this book is an important one? Well, this book uh, deals really with something that is at the core of our lives. It's agriculture, it's the way in which we use uh, our land, it's the food uh, that we produce, uh, it's li livelihoods. It's about how uh, societies decide to support or not their agricultural production, uh, and then how we ensure that at the global level, rules are fair so that uh, opportunities for growth uh, through trade particularly are not hampered by policies that will discriminate or will make it more difficult for some com to compete with others. Well, I think it's probably the first kind of big reference book that looks really in depth at the agriculture uh, subsidies and particularly the green box subsidies in the WTO and, and, and an attempt to look at it from a very comprehensive uh, point of view, looking not only at the kind of more traditional potential trade distorting impact of green box subsidies, but also looking at the role of green box subsidies in providing some you know, public goods, uh, like enhancing the environment, protecting biodiversity, protecting small farmers, protecting livelihood, rural development, and so on and so forth. Both looking at the situations in developed countries and probably more importantly looking at developing countries and the particular needs and concerns that they have in agriculture. The issues of agricultural subsidies have been a tremendously important issue in the discussions about a new world trade agreement. And within the area of agricultural subsidies, uh, there are various distinctions. And a critical one is between those subsidies that affect trade, distort trade, or limit market access, and other kinds of subsidies uh, which are less trade distorting and which have even are associated with important other social goals such as improving the environment or uh, providing nutrition to poor people. So those subsidies that have desirable other social goals fall into what's called the green box. These are subsidies that the WTO agreement allows countries to pursue and this book both for the developed world and for developing countries articulates uh, the importance of the green box for those kinds of uh, policies and the importance of those policies to uh, sustainable global agriculture. Well, in my view, it's important because it's uh, taking an issue that has been uh, was very important in order to conclude the euro around. Uh, without the green box, uh, that's to say the possibility to use the green box uh, by different governments, uh, the conclusion of the euro round would have been impossible because you need uh, to offer some exit, uh, I would say, to governments when going uh, down with domestic support policies that are the most distorting ones. But of course, it's a um, concluded business. Still, we need to continue, uh, I would say, with the negotiations on the Green Box. But the book is really important because it takes to the people and to the academics and everybody I would say a, a question or a sector of the negotiation was, was very significant to conclude uh, the agriculture agreement of the Euro around. Um, I think what they're going to, what's going to give, let me turn that question around a little bit. What's going to make this book itself sustainable such that in the future, five years from now, people will still be referring to this. If you want to understand the green box issues, here's a place you should go and have some confidence that, that what you're going to read there is going to put you on the right track. And I think that's the purpose of, of, of pushing a book this far, or proceedings from a conference all the way through to a university press publication. Well, I think that probably the most interesting thing is the variety of perspective that we have in the book. We have authors coming from developing countries, from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America. Uh, we're looking in depth at uh, some of the main uh, providers of green box subsidies in the EU, in Japan, in the US. And, uh, uh, and it's this kind of a, a, a gathering of different perspectives, points of view, uh, that makes it very attractive and very interesting. It is not a book that has a single kind of perspective and point of view that we're trying to push, but really trying to provide a broad sense of what are the different concerns uh, 
uh, uh, from the different players in this, in this field. Yeah, green box rules matter already because uh, countries have to de you know, because there are disciplines under the WTO agreement on agriculture, there are already disciplines. Those disciplines have some latitude for most countries. They're not terribly binding. The Doha round is trying to negotiate a, a tighter set of those rules. But even under the existing rules, countries again have to make decisions as to whether policies they will pursue really fit into the green box or really don't. So we've talked a minute ago about whether the direct payments to farmers supposedly decoupled from prices in production, whether those really satisfy the green box criteria of not stimulating production, depressing prices, uh, and really belong in the green box. And there have been legal challenges to whether the U.S. Uh, direct payments actually meet the criteria of the green box. There's a policy debate about whether they really legitimately should be in, in the green box. There's a debate within academia and among agricultural economists about what ways those kinds of direct payments might stimulate production with many unresolved questions. So already the green box rules are important. Well, I believe they matter in order, as we mentioned, not to uh, provoke an expansion of agriculture uh, production and also not the expansion of trade by uncompetitive, uh, I would say, countries in certain areas of agriculture. Grims on, uh, on farm subsidies um, will determine the way in which we use the land, will determine uh, who has the upper hand in commercial uh, terms, if you like. Uh, they may affect the livelihoods of people both in developed and developing countries they will or not enable our societies to, to deal with the challenges, uh, particularly of water scarcity and climate change uh, and the competition for the land and for the different uses of the land. This issue of green box subsidies is really going to be the core of the future kind of agriculture debate at the global level. Uh, we're dealing with the issues of the future. 